So it's either it's going to be consistent for those intervals. So this says my slope is positive. That means my function is increasing. My slope is negative. That means my function is decreasing. My slope is positive. That means my function is increasing again. Hey, are these relative extrema? Which one would you say this is? A relative max or min? Think about what the function would have to do to get that. What would the function have to do? It would have to climb and then fall. What is that? Just this part, just this part. That's a max. Climb, then fall. What's this one? Fall, then climb. Do you see what I'm talking about? So we know that right now, because of this, this is going to give us, we don't know what it is exactly because that's just the x value, but we have to plug in and find the points. That's going to give us a relative max. This one's going to give us a relative min. Would you tell me how I find those points? How would I go from here to actually get in the... Because right now I just have the x, right? So I know my relative maximum is going to happen at negative 1 comma something, right? And my relative minimum is going to happen at 1 comma something. How do I find the somethings? Not my slope function, not my first derivative, because that would give you zero. That's how we found them in the first place. But my original function, if I take these and plug them into my f of x, f of negative 1, f of 1, what now? No, no, that was a slope. That's right. So original function, plug in negative 1 here, you get negative 1 plus 3 plus 1, what do you get, 3? Three. Do the minimum. One minus three plus one. Negative one. Oh, yeah, because it right. Mm -hmm. Fast. So, can you tell me what's the relative maximum? What's the actual relative maximum? Three. Three. Where does it occur? At the point negative one three. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. What's the relative minimum? <coughs> negative one. It happens to occur at the point one negative one. Are these absolute maximums and absolute minimums? I haven't even given you a, a close, right? And this is a polynomial that looks like this. That's what this does. It goes up, down, up. There's no absolute max or min, but there's a relative max and there's a relative min. Those have, things are important. If I have the absolute when you have a set. Closed. Right. When it's closed, closed. You, will, you will definitely have that. But that's the only times when you have an interval. No. We, we could have uh, x squared. Down, up, right? So you really have to know what the polynomial you're dealing with. Uh, we'll try one more of these next time, but do you have the understanding of, of what this kind of goes on? How many people feel okay with this so far? All right. Okay, so uh, moving on, we're still talking about first derivative test, and what the first derivative test says is can you find critical numbers and determine whether or not they are relative maxes and relative mins? How to find critical numbers is the same old thing. We're going to take a first derivative, we're going to set it equal to zero, and we're going to solve it. So, take your first derivative of that thing right there and set it equal to zero for me. Would you do that for me real quick? If you haven't done that already, go for it. What'd you get? Five x to the, you all got five x to two thirds. Mm -hmm. All right, minus. Can you say what now? Ten x to the Good. Show of hands, how many people got that? <coughs> Good deal. Now, that right there is our slope. Of course, that's our first derivative. When we set it equal to zero, we'll find the places where the, the slope is zero or a horizontal tangent line. Those are defined as our critical numbers. So we have this set equal to zero. So far, so good. Now, how do you solve that? Factor out the 5x and the negative 1 Factor out the 5x, very good. And you choose the smallest power, not the largest one. The negative 1 thirds, which you want to factor. I think I showed this to you one time before, right? Mm -hmm. So we will factor out the 5x to the negative 1 third. What you end up getting, factoring means dividing, dividing means you're subtracting exponents. Check it out. You've got, well, 5x to the 2 thirds divided by 5x to the negative 1 third. There's no more 5. 
x to the two-thirds minus negative one-third is x to the first power. Did you get x to the first power? Not one-third. First power. Yes, no? Yeah. Minus. What happens if I factor out 5x to negative one-third there? How much do I get? Two. Cool. That's the correct factorization. If you want to check your work, you distribute, you see you had the right thing. How many people were able to find that one? Good. That, very good. Now, can you verify something for me real quick? Can you verify that we actually have a denominator on this problem? Why do we have a denominator on this problem? Uh -huh. So really what you have, this is not on the numerator. In fact, what you have is 5x minus 2 over a cube root of x. Can you see that? Now, here's one thing I was talking about. We're, we're at the point right now where we can make our critical numbers, where we can find those things. But there's one thing you got to realize. Whenever you have a denominator, the value that makes your denominator <coughs> equal zero also has to be on your critical number. Does that make sense to you? It's got to be there. Even though that's a denominator, and some of you might go, oh, well, zero product property, right? Because you have something times something equals zero. Well, yeah, that's true. But realize what this is. This is actually one over the cube root of x. You follow me on that? That's why I'm giving it to you this way so that when you come up with your problems, you get the right critical numbers. So let's go ahead and make our first derivative test. Remember, that's the table. And on our table, we're going to do critical numbers. Critical numbers occur where the function is equal to 0. In our case, x minus 2 equals 0. <clears throat> and where the denominator equals 0. Now, that's going to be an undefined point for a slope, but it might change increasing to decreasing, something like that. So we'll also have the cube root of x equals 0. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your hand if you feel okay on getting those points. So where the numerator equals 0 is where the function will equal 0. Where the denominator equals 0 is going to be some undefined points for slope. Right, that, that could be the case. So we, we need to have that up here somewhere. We, we have interesting things that happen there. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to get x equals 2. We're going to get x equals 0. We'll have some critical numbers. Now, something may or may not happen here, but it, it might. How many regions do we have in regions? So we're going to check a point in each of a number in each of those regions. This one you'd probably pick negative one. This one you'd probably pick one. This one you'd probably pick three. So let's check those. Now my question is, where do I check them? Do I check them in my original or in my first derivative? Mm -hmm. Original will give me points. First derivative will give me slopes. The slope should, will tell me increase or decreasing, which is what I'm looking for. You remember that this is supposed to give me increase and decreasing, right? So do I plug it in my original, which gives me points, or my first derivative, which gives me slopes? The first derivative. That's why it's called the first derivative test. So take some numbers here, f prime of negative 1. f prime of 1, f prime of 3. And we're plugging it into, well, the first derivative because what I, what I know is that if the slope is positive, I'm increasing. If the slope is negative, I'm decreasing. That's where we want to find out. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, when you plug in negative 1, what do you get? You get a positive number? Okay, because we have a negative number over a negative number, that's going to give you a positive number. Did you get that as well? So I don't care what the value is, as long as you know it's positive, that's going to be a plus. Are you with me on the plus? Let's plug in 1. When you plug in 1, do you get a positive number or a negative number? Who, who got negative? You got negative? Anybody else get a negative number? Are, are you seeing, I'm getting a lot of people who aren't saying anything, are you getting where the, the positive and negative are coming from? Okay, negative, very good. We get Negative over positive, that's a negative. When you plug in and try that on your own, plug in the 1 here, you're going to get negative 1 times 5, that's negative 5, over positive 1, that's negative 5, that's a negative. You still okay? Plug in 3. When you plug in 3, you're going to get a positive times a positive, that's a positive. 
over a positive. Cube root of 3 is going to be positive, right? I don't really care what it is. As long as it's positive or negative, that's going to be a positive. Show of hands, how many people feel okay on the plus minus plus? Do you see why the zero was important there? That's pretty important, right? It shows you a change. Even though this was on a denominator, you had to have that. So you've got to have that as part of your critical numbers. It can show a change between increasing and decreasing. Now, what do all these things mean, the plus minus plus? What does plus mean for us? Increasing. Increasing. Very good. What does minus mean? Decreasing. decreasing. What does plus mean again? Increasing. So our graph is going to be increasing. I don't know how. I don't know whether it's like this or whether it's like this. That's concavity. But I know it's going up. Then I know it's going to be going down. Then I know it's going to be going up again. Right? Now, are these things relative maxes or mins? Well, that's a tricky question when you have a denominator because we don't know what's defined and what's undefined. You follow me on that? So we're going to have to take a better look at that later on. We'll, we'll do the second derivative test right now. I'll show you how to combine those things, and then we'll start talking about curve sketching and what happens whether these things have asymptotes or not. Does that make sense? Now, I'm guessing that, can you, plug, can you actually plug in zero? You can, right? Yeah, zero. That is actually, that's a point, that's a defined point. Our slope's not defined, but our, that is a defined point. So if you plugged in zero, you're going to get a relative, what is that going to be when you're going up and going down? It's relative max. What's this one going to be? It's going to be relative min. So that does actually work for us in this case. But I'm going to show you how to figure that out in association with the second, second derivative test. Let me get that back. <laughs> Do you feel okay with the first derivative test? What's the idea? Take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, find your critical numbers, and then plug in some values for every interval that will tell you increasing and decreasing. And that's the whole plan. You follow? Now let's take a look at the second derivative test. 